Okay, so I gotta get it going a little bit faster here. So on this one, it tells us that we have a recursive equation or an explicit equation, and since it's 4x, that's dx, right? So dx plus f of 0. So f of 0 would be my first term. If I didn't remember, do it, remember it that way, all I have to do for my first term is plug in 1 for x. So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So f of 1 is 7. Then I could put 2 in. So 2 in for x, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11. All right, and then I can just put the 3 in, 4 times 3, 12, plus 3, 15, you know, and so now hopefully I get the idea that it's recur recursively, all I have to do is keep adding 5, 4, I mean, 4. So 15 plus 4, 19, 19 plus 4, 23. Okay, or I could have kept putting in the numbers in and done it that way also. Number 6, so on this one, all I could do first is just put 1 in for x, all right? Well, no, I didn't. It's right here. So it told me f of 1 was 4. Then they gave me the recursive formula, right? So to find the next number, all I'm going to do is multiply it by negative 3. So I take the 4 times it by negative 3, negative 12. Take negative 12 times negative 3, 36. Times negative 3, negative 108. Times negative 3, 324. So now number seven. Mike earns $20 per day mowing lawns. How much did he earn in seven days? So I could have gone 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 27 times, or 20 times seven, same thing. So he made $140 in one week of mowing lawns. So then it said write a recursive equation that best describes the situation. So I knew that my um, common difference was 20, right? Because each day he's getting 20. So on the first day, just out of reasoning, he made $20. And then every day after that, he makes 20, right? So all I'm going to do then for a recursive equation, f of x equals the day before it plus 20. So the second day, he take the $20 he made the first day, add 20, so the second day he made 40, and so on. The explicit, remember, is the, kind of like this y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form. So it's just going to be f of x equals dx plus f of 0. So on the day before he started, he didn't make any money. So f of 0 would be 0. But I'm not going to write 20x plus 0, so it just ends up being 20x. Then it asks, how much did he make um, for 30 days? So all I did now is pull out the x, put 30 days in for x, and in 30 days times 20, he made $600. All right, so number eight, Jane's mean teacher is going to triple the amount of homework every day. That's like a stupid goal. But anyways, we'll go with it. So, make a table. So it tells us in the problem that he's going to, of course it's a man, he assigns four problems. So day one he assigns four. So day two he's going to double, oh, triple it. Wow, read that wrong. So four times three is going to be twelve. Times that by 3 would be 36. Times that by 3. And 108, just didn't want to make another mistake. Times that by 3, and I think it's still going to be 324, but I'm not going to make a mistake. And it is 324. So on the fifth day, he's going to get 324 problems. I'll bet you he gets some phone calls from angry parents. Anyhow, here we go. So, write the recursive formula so that we need to state that the first term or the first day he assigned 4, and then each day he's going to times it by 3. 
So then the formula would be f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 3. All right? And it's a geometric because each day is getting times. Now the explicit formula is going to be the first term, f of x equals the first term, 4, times our common ratio raised to the x minus 1 power. And so we could test that if we wanted to. For example, we could put a 4 in. It's because we all know on the fourth day it's going to be 108, right? So 4 minus 1 would be 3. So 3 to the third power is 27. So 27 times 4 is 108. So our explicit formula is going to work. So now, on the 25th day, ready for this? And that's only doubling it, so i got to change that to tripling it. So what we're going to have to do now is take the 4, times it to 3 to the 24th power, right? Because 25 minus 1 is 24. So 4 times 3 to the 24th power, and that is some way big number, a lot bigger than what I have here. So what it's going to be is it's going to start off, the calculator says it's 1.13 times 10 to the 12th power. That means I'm going to have a number, I have to move the decimal to the right 12 times. That means this number is going to be 13 digits long. Well, this one over here is only 8. So it's going to, my next number is going to be 13 digits long. Five more digits than this one. Huge number. Okay? So, yeah. Mean teacher. Or maybe... I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to teach the power of numbers in a really mean way. Okay, so now on this one, it tells us this is number 9. It's arithmetic uh, mean to find the common difference. So to use the arithmetic mean, okay, so I have the first term and I have the sixth term. Well, I really can't use the arithmetic mean because to use the mean, I'd have to find the number right in the middle. So, for example, if they would have gave me 20, the, the fifth term and the first term, then I could do the arithmetic mean. So what I would have done so to find the third term is I would have taken the 2, added it to 26, and then divided it by 2. The average of 26 and 2 is 14. Okay? Then I could use the mean here and get, you know, the average of 2 and 14, add 2 and 14 together, 16 divided by 2 is 8. That would be the arithmetic mean. But since they didn't give me the middle number, I can't find there's no number in the middle of 1 and 6. So therefore, I couldn't do it that way. So what we had to do is use the difference formula. And all it is is kind of like the slope formula. So y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here's my y2. Here's my y1. And I'm going to divide it by x2 minus x1. So that gave me 32 minus 2 is 30. 6 minus 1 is 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. That was my common difference. So my common difference is 6. That means all I'm going to do is add 6 each time. So 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 plus 6 is 20. 20 plus 6 is 26. Plus 6 is 32. So it worked out. And we did that one correctly.